Number three. Last week, Pastor Rod did um, faith and works. Today, I'm going to do the first 12 verses of James chapter 3, faith and words. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. So let's go open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for this service. Father, as we get into your word this morning, hide me behind your cross. May your words come forth. You minister to these people as only you can, Lord. And we commit this service into your hands. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. James chapter 3. Twelve verses, all talking about words. And he starts off in verse 1. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. We don't often think about that, do we? In a teaching, in demonstrating. As, you see, words are important. And not only was, it, was he, the writing, he's, he's writing to, you know, it talks about to the teachers to be careful. Make sure you prepare. Make sure you're ready. Make sure you're surrendered to the Lord. Your prayer life is where it should be. You prayed up. And also, they faced other things that we don't particularly face today. You see that in the writings of Paul, as he wrote to Timothy and Titus, young preachers. And there were those that had slipped into teaching positions that were trying to lead the flock astray. And uh, so he, he tells them, beware of these things. And so he brings this up, he starts off, because words are important. And so, my brethren, let not many of you become teachers. See, there's, there's a sober admonition going on here that we need to take our responsibility serious. And we need to consider its cost. And it's very important that we, when we teach the Word, if God has called you to teach, then you teach. And it, you teach because of you want to see people's lives changed. But what we also realize is that we can't do any of the changing. Don't have the power to do that. You see, as a young preacher, I used to think it was my job to not only share the word, but my job to reel them in. I learned very early on that's not the case. Not my responsibility. So James reminds those that are in leadership they'll be held accountable for exemplifying Jesus Christ in their spirit and behavior as well as their word and duties. So that's why he starts off with talking about the teachers. It's very important because they speak what? Words. All the time speaking. But to make sure that the words that we're saying are the words that God would have us to say and not the things that we want to say. To me, too many times we can abuse the position of teaching and me sharing the word of God well I'll make a point this morning no it's not ours to do it is ours to do is to preach the word of God consistently not to try to protect, take a message and proclaim it to any particular one that's not my job it's the Lord's work to do that work. It's mine to proclaim the word in the fashion, the way that's pleasing unto him. And that's what he tells us to do. Next slide, please. Leaders in the kingdom, however, are judged not so much by what they accomplish. Why? Because we can't change anything. As by the character they reveal. Who they are before what they do. See, you realize, and every one of us are teaching something, or somebody, whether we realize it or not. Whether you're here at church, whether you're at work, whether you're at home, and your families, we're all teachers. Do you realize that there's some people in your life that you will be the only Bible they ever read? And you're the only gospel that they'll ever hear. When we consider those things as humbling, isn't it? Huh? That as we speak the word, it be very important that it's not me, but it's him. 
Next slide, please. If the leader's heart is right, godly behavior will always follow and good leadership will be manifested. Luke taught that much as to those that much is given, much is required. Luke chapter 12, verse 48. And so when we have our, our life right, when our place is right, then, and we're not going to always be perfect, we all stumble, which we're going to get into that. We're all broken. But you to see the thing out of the brokenness, out of our brokenness, He's taking those broken pieces and making something beautiful out of them. Well, our life is really like a mosaic, isn't it? Because what seems shattered and broken, then he takes those pieces and he turns it into that which is pleasing to him. So from brokenness to beauty. And only he can do that. So it's manifest in us. Next slide, please. James has a sober admonition for those who would become teachers in the church. They must take the responsibility seriously because their accountability is greater and they shall receive a stricter judgment. See, too many often times if we're not careful, we say, oh, I didn't, stop. I just slapped something together, don't matter, put a little something together, go down and just get through the time. God help us. If that's all we're doing, God help us. Huh? That's not so much more required. Because God has raised up teachers in this church and leadership in this church as we proclaim and share with one another and as one another, we all share together. As we do this thing, we realize that there's, there's we'll answer for it because it's important. It's important what we teach. Make sure that they're learning and making sure that they're growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus. You see, the Bible also says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And sometimes it's because the teachers aren't doing their jobs. Hmm? And so it's sobering to understand this. But also, we also understand that it's freeing to know that, hey, Lord, I just give all this over to you. I surrender my life to you. Next slide, please. James 3, 2. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man and is able to bridle the whole body. Now that idea of being a perfect man is probably better translated spiritually mature. He is spiritually mature and able to get everything under control if you can if he does what stumbles in word what the tongue there's a lot of power in this tongue we all stumble in many things we don't like to admit that hmm? and we like to, you know no no my, my, i got it all together i serve the lord jesus yeah you know we're all the saints of god but we're also sinners and that's a great contradiction, and that's, a, that's something we all have to always deal with. There's a balance that's always going on as we have struggled between these two things because self needs to die on a daily basis that the Lord Jesus can live in through us more. And that's something we face every single day. We stumble. And James admits it. See, the reason why he's writing some of these things and all these different things that James is writing, I am convinced the reason why James is writing these things because he struggled with all of these things. And as his life's been transformed, he is taking all of these things that's changed him and he's sharing them back with the, with the body, with the believers. Because they're facing a lot of things. Remember, the diaspora, they're all scattered throughout the kingdom for their faith in Jesus Christ. They're facing a lot of things. And so as they face these things, you know, it's too easy just to sit down and wring our hands and say, where are you, God, in all this? It's too easy to do. Instead of saying, 
Lord, I know you're in total control of my life. I am in your hands. And if I'm in this circumstance and situation, then there's a reason that I'm here. And may I learn from that reason. May I see that purpose that you might use me to bring glory to your name. That changes everything, doesn't it? When you start seeing things like that. Next slide, please. And that word perfect, the Greek word is teleos, from telos, end. Teleos refers to that which has reaches an end, that is finished, complete, perfect. When applied to a person, it signifies consummate soundness and includes the idea of being whole. When applied to believers, it denotes maturity. And so that's what the point of being, why he used that word. It was not that we are perfect. Oh, we like to think so sometimes. I tell you, we're not. You see, it's easier for me to find that in you than it is to find that in me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, huh? And we all do that, don't we? Not me. Oh, but did you see what they did? That tongue. How quick it is to tear down. How quick it is to hurt and bring pain. Next slide, please. You see, the greater accountability of a teacher is especially sobering in light of our common weaknesses. You'll be careful what we say. Have you ever said something the second you got it out of your mouth you wish you could have pulled it back in? Huh? Huh? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, the second you did it, oh no, too late. And so that's what, that's what James is telling us as we teach and what's what we do. Be careful what you say because in a split second you can tear everything down. We all stumble in many things. The ancient Greek word translated stumble does not imply a fatal fall. That's not what he's talking about. But something that trips us up and hinders us our spiritual progress. The tongue. Uh. Tongue wagging. Oh, we can get so spiritual when we do it. You know, did you hear about Brother So? You know, I'm going to tell you this so we can pray for him. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> huh? No, we, 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 how easy it is to do those things. Next slide, please. James 3.3 3 says, Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Now, look what James is talking about. Look, you put a bit in a horse's mouth, and a horse is big. And through the bit, the bridle, and all that they can, you can if you learn, you can maneuver that animal in what direction you'd have it to go. As a child, I grew up in Seattle as a child. And I worked at, at 10 years old, I went to work at Woodland Park Zoo in Seattle, Washington, at the pony ring. There was a ring of wires, and we had the horses in there, and they'd take the round, and the kids would put it, pay a dime, and I don't know how many times they got to go around, I can't remember, for a dime, they got to go around a couple times, and it was a pony ring. And I learned the hard way that you lead a horse from the front, you don't get behind them. <laughs> I thought, oh, it took the wind out of me. I learned the hard way, huh? And James is telling us that, in the, that you can maneuver this animal around with this little bit that you put in the mouth. Next slide, please. Goes on in verse 4 and says, Look also, ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they're turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. So he's using this as an example, talking about the tongue. Next slide, please. You see, if the tongue is like a bit in the mouth of a horse or the rudder on a ship, it leaves us with the question, next slide, who or what holds the reins? Or who or what directs the rudder? Who's in control of your tongue? Is it you? Or you surrender it to the Lord. Say, Lord, help me be careful of the things that I say. What's maneuvering us? Because words, words are powerful. And so, 
He tells us also, next slide please, even so the tongue is a little member, boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. Now we've had a lot of fires this summer, especially in California. Well, I mean, a year ago in California, a town by the, by the name of Paradise, California, pretty well burned up. 95% of that town disappeared. Because what started off as a small fire ended up engulfing and destroying that whole community. Paradise was not such, and they're in the process of rebuilding right now. And it only took a spark to get the fire going. So you can burn the house down, huh? That quick. And also, if we're working for the Lord and we're using the tongue in the right way, it only takes a spark to get a fire of revival going, too. Oh, that's the kind of fire we want to see. Huh? The transforming power. You see, what can this tongue, what it can do? Blessings and cursings. Shouldn't be, but they're both there. You've got to be really careful of it. Yes, so, next slide, please. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Notice what he's saying. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. Just about how you can maneuver or that tongue can destroy a, li a life. You've got to be careful what you say. Especially you that have children. I know, I raise, I raise children. It's been a while back now. My little baby girl, just, she's in her 50s now. Like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I've heard others do this and it's just wrong. Because words can destroy a person. You take a child and in a fit of anger, you damn them before God. Now we know that God doesn't damn them just because you said it. But that child does not know that. That child does not know that. Do you know what that would do over time and time that the parent keeps saying, God damn this child? breaks them. And that's what James is conveying to us. Be very careful because there's fire in that tongue to destroy. And he's talking to believers. He's talking to those of faith. And sometimes we say the worst thing, you know, my prayer is, Lord Jesus, give me a filter. You ever met somebody that doesn't have a filter at all? I mean, the second something, whoo, out of the mouth it comes. Dangerous stuff. Lord, give us a filter. And we be careful. Because the words that we may say in a split second may be so hurtful. So, so bad. The tongue is set among our members that defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. It's like we're talking about California. All that burn is burning over there. It has burned in the fires that we have here. But notice, and it is set on fire by... What's the last word? Hell. Hell. This is God's people using their tongues, speaking the words of hell. Dangerous. And so, as we see this, Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit, both good and bad, whether it's speaking words of death or speaking words of life. The power is in the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit, one way or the other. It's very important. Lord Jesus, make me think about it before I say it. And so we live in a time that it's more important today than in ever before. Because we speak the words 
And we also type the words. Facebook, Twitter, emails, YouTube, Instagram. And it's amazing the things that was in the darkness and the privacy of a home that you might type out and you send out that you would never say to someone in person. And we don't think twice about it. But our words, whether we do it good or for bad or however we do that, may we think about, like, why did I want to send that or why did I send that? That was wrong. Is it Christ honoring? Do you think about before you send out an email, the email and the things you're saying in that, is it Christ honoring? You see, our words reveal what is actually within us. <coughs> what we speak or what we'll do in prayer, what we'll say, that's in us. And we need to face that. To say, Lord, why do I think that way? Why did that anger me to the point that I responded this way? Help me, oh Lord. That I'll respond the way that's pleasing unto you. Because again, you're the only Bible and the only gospel that sons people may ever read. And what kind of message we're conveying this morning. So, one way or the other, no matter for good or bad, we're going to eat the result of what we say. Next slide, please. For every kind of beast and bird and reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. It's amazing some of the things we've done. Taming animals. And the point that he's making in all this, we've tamed these animals, we've done these things, we've broken horses, we, we have the ability to do all this stuff, and yet our tongue is uncontrollable. That's the point he's making. Well, next slide. See, a wild animal can be more easily tamed than the tongue. Hmm? That's amazing. In fact, James tells us that no man can tame the tongue. That should drive us to our knees. No man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And so, as we see what this can do, and how it can break things. Next slide, please. The true source of the unruly evil produced by the tongue is hell. That's what it says. Verse 6. At one end, the tongue spits deadly poison, and at the other end, it's manipulated by wicked spirits. You see, we have the Holy Spirit living within us as believers, but sometimes we put an ear out to the evil one, don't we? And we listen to those things, and we shouldn't. But we do. And he entraps us sometimes. And so when we're manipulated that way, we need to surrender and say, no, 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 I'm not listening to you. Yes, what you're saying to me might be true. There may be some truth in it, but you're a liar because Jesus Christ paid for my sin debt in full at Calvary's cross. And I'm not claiming that anymore. Huh? That's a hallelujah moment. Therefore, no man can tame them. How quick and how unruly it is. Next slide, please. As we get off into the it's a great contradictory in the next in the next verses. I think about I think about well, 1992, let me tell you a story. I always got a story. 1992, I was in church. To this day, I still don't know what I did to do that. You, know, you, you, you have something happen to you and you don't know why. But it did. And I just have to say, okay, Lord, have to give me down. I guess to talk to me. You know, I can get a little going sometimes and be, you know, a lot of action, a lot of working, a lot of doing. Okay, Lord may give you some quiet time. I don't know. But 1992, I was in church. And church was over. Somebody said, Pastor Ron, and I said, what? And I did, I don't know, but hopefully we won't do it this morning. 
<laughs> and I turned like this, and I heard a tsh. And I had a vertical split of the tibia and the fibia from the ankle to the knee. Just broke. I'm standing there realizing my leg's not even connected anymore. And I tried to maneuver myself down. I said, what are you doing, Pastor Ron? I said, I think I broke my leg, which I did. And so they put me in a cast, they went and they set it, and put me in a body cast from the groin down, I mean a whole leg cast, I was down for six months. Long time. And uh, in that six month period of time, I had a lot of time to reflect things, a lot of time to think about things. Because I'm gonna, I reflect, I think about how long that took to heal. And I remember as a child being taught, sticks and stones may break my bones, but what? But that's a lie, do you know that? That is a lie. Huh? Words do hurt. Yeah, you may break your bones, and I it's crazy things you think about, so as I'm, I'm healing and getting better. But six months, I was back up and running again. Do you realize that there's words that's been said in families that families have split for decades over them? They won't talk to one another by words. Now that, that leg healed quicker than those words. The words will never hurt me. That's a lie. Words are powerful. Words can hurt. Words can destroy relationships. So we must be careful. The contradictory character of the tongue is contrasted in these last verses that I'm reading this morning. Verse 9, it says, With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in the similitude, or you could say in the likeness, of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter water from the same opening? The answer is no. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? Or a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. See, there's a great contradiction in us, isn't there? And how easy it is to fall into that. James had fallen into that. James had words that he had to get forgiveness over. Hmm? Well, my brother thinks he's Messiah. Mr. Goody Two Shoes. He didn't believe any of it. Until Resurrection Sunday came. And that changed everything, didn't it? So, there's a great contradiction. The things that we say. When we first started this book out, chapter 1, James verse 19, he tells us to be swift to hear and slow to speak. I kind of heard it thought was always taught this you have two ears and one mouth. Uh -huh. well, anybody else hear that stuff? Huh? Yeah. And we need to think twice before we speak. You can destroy a person that quick. Or hidden in the night, sitting there typing on a computer, and all of a sudden, you know, you just say, oh, I'm going to send the tweet, I'm going to send this out. Before you ever be ever think about sending it out, you need to think about what the motive is why you're doing it. It is a God honoring. Huh? Will the Lord Jesus be honored in what I'm getting ready to say? Everything needs to be judged like that. And all that we do. And all that we say. And that's why the words are very important. It says faith without works is dead. And faith with the wrong word said can kill you. Very powerful stuff. As we wrap this up today, I want to have you think about this. You never have to take back what you didn't say. 
If you never said it, you never have to take it back. But then I would begin to ask the Lord, Lord, why do I think that way? What did I, why am I thinking this way about this person or whatever it is? If you don't say it, it's not going to hurt them. But what it does show that, because to justify, just say, well, I really thought it, so it doesn't really matter. Well, yes, it does matter because words can hurt. Yes, it does matter. But then you can take those words that you were getting ready to send or you're getting ready to say and then and you, you, have cur you curb yourself from doing it to say, okay, Lord Jesus, why am I thinking like that? Why, what's this doing to me? That's most important, isn't it? Because all those words, they reveal really what's within us. Whether we do it in the light you know, what does the scripture say? If it's done in darkness, it'll be what? Brought into the light. Huh? It's going to be revealed. So we think we get away with so much. We can get away with nothing. And it's the, Lord who wants, it's, it's the Lord's job. He's changing all of us. It's not me. We have no inspection police around here. And there, you know, there's churches that do that. Make sure you check the boxes. Check all the boxes and you follow these little, you know, all these rules and you do all those boxes. Oh, you're a good Christian now. That's performance, church. It's not about checking boxes or how good we are. I surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ and say, Lord, you take over, you work in and through me. That's what Paul, Paul said, didn't he? I die daily. Huh? That he could live within me. Oh, may we come to that same place. Be swift to hear, slow to speak never have to take back what you don't say. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you, Father, for the realization is our, how quick something that we say can be so hurtful and so destructive. There's blessings and cursings in the tongue. Lord, teach us to be a blessing. And when we find ourselves getting angry over something or something we're getting ready to say that we really shouldn't be saying, give us a filter, Lord, to stop and to reflect and to think upon why is, am I reacting this way? Change me, O oh Lord, that I might not sin against you. We thank you for this body. We thank you for your words. May we be up and about your business. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.